what we're here to talk about today is moving from a reactive to a proactive stance and some of the, the tools and processes to help you get there. We are managed network monitoring and management. We're headquartered in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. In case you're wondering the sort of trivia point for the day, that polar bear in the bottom right corner, his name is Nanook. It is simply a polar bear in the Inuit language. My name is Steve Petrushuk. I am the technology advocate here at Avic. I work a lot with existing clients, prospective clients, as well as the IT community at large to sort of help them address network management challenges. So I have experience on the, the product side, pre-sales, post-sales, managing la uh, networks and whatnot as well. I'm joined today by Ryan, and I will pass it over to Ryan to do a bit of an introduction on himself here. Uh, thank you, Steve. So uh, I am with Sherwell uh, Software. So we are a, a next generation enterprise service management platform. So for those who may not be familiar with the term, enterprise service management takes your traditional IT service management, like incident, uh, problem, change, your CMDB, and expands that scope outside of traditional IT. So we're consistently named leaders by the industry analysts across their major quadrants and waves. Uh, we have over 2,000 customers globally who are leveraging Sherwell to make their workflow, to automate as much as possible, and to accelerate their responses to changing scenarios. Uh, my name is Ryan Counts. Uh, I am a solution engineer for Sherwell uh, based out of Dallas, Texas. So I have about 20 years experience on both sides of the rope as either being from the vendor or as a IT engineer. I've been a developer, project manager, specialist throughout engineering, run a couple of service desks. So in that time, I've learned a lot of the ways not to run IT and in the process, kind of identified some best practices that we're hoping to share with you today. Awesome. I, I love that last point. I've learned all the things to not do. And that's uh, hopefully you, you've learned from the mistakes. And that's the key about making them is that, that we all learn from them, right? Exactly. So so let's dive into a little bit of the agenda. Uh, first, we'll talk about shipping from reactive proactive. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about integrating network monitoring into your uh, ITSM platform to help you put out some of those fires faster. And we'll start to look at some specific points on where to incorporate tools uh, into automate uh, some processes here. I pulled a couple of stats to sort of start our discussion today. These stats come from a report that Ovi released a couple of months back. It was a report we called our network field report. We found out 52% of the time that IT pros spend doing stuff is on projects that they either hate or tolerate. So we had awesome engagement here with where you locate in the world. So I'm curious if we can get some engagement on, on this as well. I think we all want to be in this position where we uh, spend the majority of time on things that we want to, to work on. Uh, I, I love the one response. 110% of time is spent on things that they hate or tolerate. You know, I, I never think we're going to get to 100% of the things that we enjoy doing, right? We can never have 100% of our job enjoyable. That's sort of like a utopia, but the reality is getting there is kind of difficult. So I always strive for that 80 to 90%. If I'm happy with 80 to 90% of what I'm doing, I'm, I'm in a good spot. So why aren't we spending more? time doing things that we want to be working on, it's simply not enough time. It's not the time factor. It's actually the priorities aren't things I like doing, or I'm stuck doing a job I don't like doing, whatever that might be. But for the most part, it seems to be not enough time is sort of the, the main reason why we're spending all our time on these things that we hate or tolerate. One thing that, that I like to do whenever I have this conversation with myself is if I'm spending all this time on, on these items that I hate or tolerate, what would I rather be doing with that time, right? What could I be doing? And that's where we start to get into this more proactive discussion. I want to be doing things that help better the business, advance us, improve our processes, improve my user's experience. And those are all the things that I want to be doing with that time. And so now I have to figure out how to make that 52% number lower. How do I spend less time on the things that I hate or tolerate? So let's all take a collective deep breath. A time of renewal, I'm, I'm standing here, it's uh, just above the freezing mark, I'm in Canada. So feeling this this renewal, how do we sort of apply that to this situation where we're in, where we're spending you know 110% of the time on things that we don't like doing? First, we have to get out of the deep end and stop getting buried in reactive tasks, right? The, the way to get out in front of this is to start to be proactive um, because something that I do reactively is always going to take longer and it's always going to be sort of the, the, this pain point. So how do we lighten that load? How do we make sure that we're spending less time doing these reactive tasks? The two things that we'll sort of touch on are, are automation and documentation around this front. So automation, the reality here is that we don't wake up one day and have a fully automated network and fully automated processes all around me. Automation has to be a, a gradual and a progressive process. Um, I had to start biting off little chunks, right? So it's how do you eat the elephant, right? Like one bite at a time. So what are the progressive steps that I can take towards automation? And what are the things I can do, you know, today, three months, six months, uh, 12 months down the line to help me automate a lot of the manual things that I'm doing today to free up some of that time. 
And the other portion of it is the documentation side. So how do I take some of these tasks that are very manual and automate those to help it with better documentation so that when I'm in a reactive situation, so now we're talking about, uh, I'm in this reactive situation, I'm trying to reduce the time it takes me to, to resolve that problem. I need to have the, the information in front of me to resolve that problem a lot quicker. So have you ever you know, tried to resolve a network issue without knowing how a network is configured or tried to identify, I mean, this probably happened a lot in the past year, you know, like a remote user issue when they don't, don't have any information about their endpoint or what network they're connected to or what the ISP performance is like. Without sort of any of that documentation and that, that visibility, it gets really challenging to solve problems. So if I think about how much time I spend doing things that we don't like doing, I'm often in a reactive situation looking for the documentation on what a process looks like or where this password is documented. Or I'll, I'll say to myself, oh, you know who knows the answer to this question? John. Okay, well, where's John? I'm going to run down back in the days when we were in the offices, um, run down to his office and say, hey, John, I need this piece of information from you. Now I'm slacking them, teams, you know, texting, emailing, sending a carrier pigeon to try and get that information in, in John's head. That'll waste a lot of time. So how do I get better documentation to improve my reactive time? So those are kind of the two areas that, that we're going to touch on today, help improve that time we spend doing things that we hate. Let's talk specifically about how integrating your network monitoring solution with your ITSM can help you start down this path, right? Putting out fires faster when you're in that reactive sense, and then help you get a little bit more proactive, prevent some of those future outages. So if we think about where most organizations are in their IT maturity, most organizations are at about somewhere around a two out of a potential five. There's plenty of opportunity for growth. The situation around us has changed substantially. Uh, you know, a year ago, we would have been able to run into the data center and, and check our, our systems, look for red lights, green lights. Uh, we would have been able to pop out of our cube and ask our neighbor. We are seeing organizations starting to come back into the office. However, I'm also seeing a lot of organizations realize that things were a little easier when people were working remotely. So we're seeing fewer organizations fully come back into the office. And not to mention, you know, we want to hope for the best and hope that this kind of situation doesn't occur again, but we really need to be prepared for the worst. So how do we combine preparations for that in the future and also grow us in the maturity curve? Toward that end, we really recommend, you know, looking at that automation to do a couple of things, you know, shorten incident life cycles. Uh, we also want to be able to triage issues to be able to understand what is actually impacted faster, more effectively. Uh, we also want to potentially get proactive in terms of let's look at historic patterns of issues, spot the early indicators of future issues that are coming out and ultimately help us prevent future outages. So toward that end, what, what we are increasingly working with our customers on is improving their CMDB. Uh, the big challenges that I've seen that have killed it has been too much manual effort. Uh, a CMDB is achievable, but you absolutely need to automate the data coming in. The second I have people manually plugging in configuration details into a CMDB or, or asset data, it becomes immediately suspect. Uh, let's automate wherever possible. So toward that end, a couple of areas that we would want to be able to focus on. That. If we start at tier one, let's get a basic understanding of what you've got from an asset inventory perspective. What all is out there? At least be able to identify it by its OS, uh, you know, IP address, fully qualified DNS name. Know what's uh, currently active with versus what is currently in repair or maybe it's being retired, et cetera. As we move forward, we also wanna start gathering more configuration details. That's also gonna help us when we do have an incident so I can quickly have a single source where I've got all the configuration details I need. I don't have to bring up Slack. I don't have to send out carrier pigeons or, or smoke signals or anything like that. The other benefit to this is by having that de detail in the CMDB and having an accurate solution that's, that's tracing this information, it means that as we start thinking about change management, we can start validating those changes and potentially prevent outages moving forward. It also means that, you know, if we think about like the life cycle of an incident here, we can actually affect multiple points within this. So it's not just about early identification and, and getting in front of those issues. It's also about as I'm troubleshooting it, how do I isolate? If it's a router or switch, that's actually the root cause of the issue. That may not be immediately evident just based off looking at the event coming in because my users are reporting emails not working or CRMs not working when it's really an underlying piece within that infrastructure. We'll want to be able to very quickly trace the issue to the actual source of the problem. Uh, we also want to be able to automate
automate our, our rollout of fixes as well. Well, again, we need accurate configuration knowledge to know what chain details to change. We also need to know what has recently been changed on that infrastructure. So as I'm looking at that router or switch, knowing that somebody just pushed out a config an hour ago and now suddenly I've got an issue, that kind of gives me a light bulb moment that can help me quickly identify the issue. We also want to look at this as, as an investment for, of everybody's time as well as resources. So we also want to quantify this in a way that we can go to the business and justify these expenses. So if we start looking at like the cost of an outage, for example, and we've got some metrics here on this slide, they can get substantial, especially with customer facing applications or business critical processes. So if we start measuring how many of those we are shortening the life cycle uh, of mean time to resolution, if we can start measuring how many times we're getting ahead of an issue and preventing an outage, all of that helps build the justification for continuing to automate the CMDB. The end result would be leveraging you know, our partner over at Avic to identify an event. So for example, we've got an Office AP here that has gone offline. They quickly identified the issue, classified it as a critical event, leveraging the API integration between the two. They quickly raised an incident, a event within Sherwell, which raised a incident, could be a major incident that is automatically assigned to the appropriate teams so we can accelerate our response. Effectively help us respond more effectively. I've got quick access to all of the configuration details in here. You have the, the cost here. I would imagine a lot of people are sort of looking at that and saying, I don't know the cost of each incident. Is that something that you see is fairly common? And how would someone get started on identifying what the cost of each incident and outage is? That's actually an exercise I've gone through with a number of customers. The recommendation I give to them is you've got to start somewhere. With a lack of information, at the very least, what we can do is look at industry numbers. So there are a number of research groups that have quantified, and there's, there's usually an annual update to these, of the average cost of an outage. Few of those, like the Uptime Institute, further break those down by industry. So they'll say, you know, for financial services, here is the average cost, which may be substantially higher simply because they are a much more technology-reliant industry versus retail, for example. Let's start communicating, start basing some of the information off of it. What I found at a lot of organizations is as we start communicating that, having meetings and discussing it, what you'll find is that that the business will come around and go, I, I like that where you're going with this, but your number's not right. Let me get you better numbers. And they will help contribute. And now you've got a good partnership that you can build on. Yeah, I think that's helpful because I know we have uh, a number of stories of helping different clients throughout Ovix history where they've come to us saying, you've saved me $5,000 an hour of downtime or whatever that number is. And, and I know for mature organizations that have that information at hand, that's a really powerful tool to help justify some of the, the tool expenses when you'll say, hey, this tool is going to cost me X, but I can save Y amount of time. But getting started in that process and getting your mind wrapped around that, I think would be challenging for some businesses that maybe haven't done that. And this I kind of recommend as a best practice for implementing any kind of tool set. But just prior to implementation, take the month that, uh, prior to that, and let's take a snapshot. Any software that I implement, there's some kind of needle that I'm wanting to move. Either it's in the number of incidents or the root, uh, mean time to resolution. And then post-implementation, let's take another snapshot. Let's really evaluate how we move those needles. Even if it's not a financial metric, I can always back into the financial metrics once I've got at least something that helps show an improvement in some means. How do you get started, I guess, in this uh, identifying some processes that you can improve it and automate? And so we've chatted about leveraging your ITSM and your network management platform and integrating those uh, to help get you a better incident visibility, as well as better information to populate your inventory into your, into your CMDB so that you have all that uh, information and all that documentation in front of you so that when something does happen, you can resolve the, the problem quicker. Getting started in this process can, can be a little bit daunting. So I want to introduce a few different things that we can do as you're assessing your own processes, your own practices, uh, whether you're doing it here on, on the call or, or afterwards, to start to understand where you sort of fall in that maturity spectrum that we sort of introduced, help to improve things overall. When I take a step back and, and I look at processes and whether it's the organization that we have here at Avic or if I'm working with a, another client as well, you know, I'm going to sort of try to understand, well, you know, is there already a process documented for something? And if not, that is, hey, there's something we can address. When I look at that process, I say, hey, can I assign a maturity level to that today? Does it look like it's something that, um, you know, is well documented, is well structured, is repeatable? I'm also going to look to try to understand what sort of frequency I, I'm implementing that, using that process. In. Is it something I should be doing every day or every week, but I'm not doing? And so even if I'm not doing something and I should be doing it regularly, then that is one that is something I might want to get started on automating sooner than later. 
I'm also going to look at my processes and say, well, are there things that I know that there's an automation for already? And I just haven't implemented it. And if it's not something that I can fully automate, if there's not a process I can fully automate today, is there something that I can tweak or improve in that existing process to help me make it more efficient so that, again, we can reduce that reactive time uh, when something does happen? Speaking personally, this is a major challenge. If I'm in a reactive situation, it's always just, hey, let's get this problem solved and, and move on. But looking back, I, I have to say for every process that I run down and after I get through an incident, I'm looking back to say, well, what could I have done differently? Could I have offloaded parts of this process to someone else? Can I better document this process so that next time I don't have to get involved? And how do I empower the rest of my team around me and make sure that everything else is taken care of so I don't have to get involved in every single step? So I'm always trying to assess those processes around me to help improve them and make them better. But it's understanding, doing that reflection afterwards and understanding what about this process I can change, improve, and automate to either avoid this issue in the future or to reduce the time it takes to me to resolve something. And what other things should we look for when we start to automate some network management processes? At the very least, that the, the configuration. What I would also recommend is look at your change management processes as well. Not just looking at how do we automate pushing out those changes, but how do we validate those changes? If I just had a, a uh, change pushed out this afternoon, did we actually change what we documented that we were going to change? Or did we potentially cause issues there? Um, and that's the other metric that, that I would also recommend is post-change incident analysis. The scenario I gave earlier was we pushed out a change to a router and then four hours later, CRM's not working and we're getting all these reports from users. So how many times have we had a structured change and in the period afterwards, we, generate, we found incidents or outages within the infrastructure? That should be telling us we need to scrutinize that change and learn from that. What did we do wrong here? Yeah, that, that's interesting. I was actually having a conversation just a couple hours ago where we went through a similar thing where it's, hey, I need to identify this change and then look at whether it's user experience or look at other metrics to understand, did my change have a negative impact? But just as importantly, you know, it's also important to look back and say, did my change have the positive impact I was expecting, right? Or was it was it neutral? And also understanding all the positive things that we do. In IT, we often deal with all the negative stuff, like, hey, it's not working. And we never get a call to say, hey, everything's working okay. So understanding also that your changes are having a positive impact is definitely good. So actually, you bring up a great point, if you don't mind, um, yep. because you know the, the other side of things is also looking at that change process. I, I see so many organizations that are struggling with, we have too many cab meetings. We have too many authorizations for all this stuff. Uh, and I feel like I'm just rubber stamping everything because I'm not sure. If we did actually look at things from the positive metrics, so look at the past success of similar changes and we, it take use, utilize that as a metric, we could actually kind of filter down and say, hey, if this has been successful 95% of the time for the past year, why do I need to take this to the cab? Uh, maybe we can just have a single person approve it. Let's save some time for everybody. So if we jump into the next slide here, no presentation is good without talking about some specifics uh, about you know, the vendors hosting it. So I like to joke around a little bit there. But uh, so if we go back to those first couple of stats I discussed, it was 52% of our time spent not doing things that we don't like or tolerate. Um, so if any of those tasks are things that we can help with, which we'll talk about in a second, you know, let's look to see how we can start to automate some of those. Together, Avic and Sherwell can do a number of things to sort of help you automate some of these both proactive and reactive network monitoring processes. So first one being inventorying the network, going out there and automating automatically discovering everything that's connected to the network, how it's connected, how it's configured, what are the serial numbers, the IP addresses, all that information is super valuable, both in the proactive, replaced by manual documentation with something automated, as well in the reactive. Give me the information I need when I need it to solve a problem faster. Similarly with, with mapping the network, right? How do I automate that network topology mapping to make sure that as I'm troubleshooting network issues, I can find out exactly who's impacted, where devices are connected. Go back to that access point offline example. Well, what assets were connected into that access point? What percentage of my users might be affected, right? Having that context is really key. Collecting the information in terms of network discovery is great, but you need to put that into somewhere where everyone knows to get it, right? Documentation, in my opinion, needs to be available to everyone. And so here I'm taking this automated discovery and I'm populating it into, into my CMDB where I have everyone on the team has access to that same information. Backing up your network devices. This is something that is both proactive, probably something that not everyone's doing day in and day out. It's one of those tasks that we probably should be doing on a regular basis, but maybe aren't all that often. So how do I automate that process so we're not spending time? I, I would bucket this into that thing 
things that I don't like doing, going out there and clicking, whether it's a UI clicking backup or going to the CLI, running that the backup command. I, I don't want to be doing any of that. So how do I automate that process so I can do things that I do want to be doing? When things do happen, making sure that the alerting is built into the workflows that you have within your, your ITSM platform within Sherwell. So you're getting an alert from Avic, driving into your existing workflows, you're signing into the right people, the right person needs to know, go through the right escalation and approval process so the issues can get resolved sooner rather than later. If you're interested in what you saw today, uh, you can definitely check out Avic. Uh, we have a free trial available for, for 14 days, avic.com slash Sherwell, as you were here today. Certainly. We would also love to spend some time with you on the Sherwell platform itself. You can request a demo through sherwell.com slash demo center, and we'd be happy to, to discuss not only the capabilities of the Sherwell platform, but also the combined capabilities of our integration with Avic. Perfect. And those links will also be in a, in a follow-up email you will receive. So with that, I will say good afternoon to both you and both Steve and Ryan, pardon me, and I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Thanks as well. Thanks for joining us.